Welcome, brothers and sisters. This is part two of my What's in a Name series on the Hebraic concept of agency. If you're new to this channel, I highly recommend watching What is Agency first, followed by What's in a Name part one. Each teaching in my agency playlist builds on each other, so feel free to do that. Also, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing and sharing the content on this channel with your family, friends, co-workers, and church members whoever you think might benefit from the scriptural perspectives offered by this ministry. Thank you. Now on to part two. What the Apostle Peter asserts to his Jewish brethren in Acts chapter 3 is imperative to our understanding about what it means to operate in someone's name. Peter told his audience that, Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you, and it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. Prophets were consistently raised up and sent by the Most High. The Almighty never sent himself disguised as a prophet. Peter directly quotes from a prophecy spoken by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18, which is about the approaching prophet who would come from the stock of Israel. Let's read those same words that Moses spoke to the people of Israel so that we can get a better understanding of how Peter was able to discern that the context in Deuteronomy 18 is alluding to the Son of God. Yahweh, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of Yahweh your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahweh my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And Yahweh said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. Peter, being within close proximity of this prophet, as one of his beloved disciples, listened to the words of the prophet, and in turn was also sent out as an apostle under the authority of said prophet. We recognize that this character in Deuteronomy 18 was indeed Yeshua, the very Son of God. The Son was sent by the Father to teach men the words that the Father had put in his mouth. The writer of Hebrews corroborates this idea at the very beginning of his epistle. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoke to us by his son. Just as Yahweh spoke to Israel through his prophets, Yahweh also spoke to his people through his son, as was prophesied in Deuteronomy 18. Jesus himself declared that he didn't come toting his own agenda. John 8:42 says, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. John chapter 7 verse 16 says, So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. Not only did the Father send his Son as an agent who would represent his name and would typify the same character traits as himself, but the Father commanded the Son to speak specific words that were long foretold. The Son cannot command the Father to do anything just like the angels can't, and just like men can't. The Father is the supreme authority and everything that he wants to accomplish gets done through his chosen agents. This hierarchical model is exemplified all throughout the scriptures. Now, let's pay close attention to Deuteronomy 18 verse 19 on the screen. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. Yeshua spoke the good news of Yahweh's kingdom on Yahweh's behalf, and in Yahweh's authority. If people reject the words of the Father, as spoken through his agent, Yeshua, then he will require those actions of the people on Judgment Day. Remember, if you reject the messenger, you reject the one who sent the messenger. No man threatens a messenger. The word authority in the Greek is exousia which is Strong's number 1849, and represents the power to act, or authority. 
Let's flesh out this name equals authority equation even further in the gospel accounts. One day, as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us, by what authority you do these things, or who it is that gave you this authority? He answered them, I also will ask you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, all the people will stone us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Yeshua used high levels of tact when dealing with the religious elite of the first century, and we see that demonstrated in the interaction we just read in Luke. They were so blinded by their traditions and pompous nature that they refused to believe and accept anything that didn't jibe with their systems of control. The people of Israel accepted John the Baptist as a legitimate prophet sent by God in heaven. John was given his authority from Yahweh. The religious elite couldn't accept John's witness, for if they did, they would also have to accept Yeshua's, because John publicly displayed subservience to Yeshua and the God-given authority he walked in. Yeshua knew that if they couldn't humble themselves and answer his question about John the Baptist truthfully, then they would absolutely refuse to accept him as being a legitimate prophet sent by God. Even though Yeshua didn't tell the chief priests, scribes, and elders who it was that gave him the authority to teach in Luke chapter 20, he was explicit about it well before the events of Luke 20 took place. The Pharisees understood that Yeshua was making claims about God being his father. This was one of the many reasons why they wanted Yeshua killed, as we see in John chapter 5, verse 18. Yeshua told these blind guides a couple of different times that, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Why didn't they receive Yeshua as the anointed prophet sent in his Father's name? Because they lusted after control. Control of the people. Control of the treasury and tithes. Control of the interpretation of God's word. They wanted to rule in place of the prophesied Son of God and wanted to bring about their own version of the kingdom under their own terms. Their commandments were above God's commandments and they wanted to cloak everything they did and taught as being approved from their apparent father, Yahweh in heaven, when in reality, they operated under a different father, the father of lies. Are you noticing the interchangeable nature of the words name and authority yet? When you've been given authority, you've been allotted the right to control, command, or to determine. It's a power or right that's been delegated or given. The Greek word for name is onoma, Strong's number 3686. It's defined as a name, authority, or cause. Helps Word Studies states that, by a usage chiefly Hebraistic, the name is used for everything which the name covers, everything the thought or feeling of which is roused in the mind by mentioning, hearing, remembering, the name. Example, for one's rank, authority, interests, pleasure, command, excellences, and deeds. Section B says that the name represents doing a thing. Example is by one's command and authority, acting on his behalf and promoting his cause. With all of this extra bit of historical context in mind, let's take another look at John chapter 5, verse 43. This version on the screen is the one I previously read. Now, we'll be looking at four other translations where the scholars that translated these particular versions kept the Hebraic concept of agency and authority in mind. The CEV translated as, I have come with my father's authority, and you have not welcomed me, but you will welcome people who come on their own. The GNT says, I have come with my father's authority, but you have not received me. When, however, someone comes with his own authority, you will receive him. The GWT puts it, I have come with the authority my father has given me, but you don't accept me. If someone else comes with his own authority, you will accept him. Lastly, the WNT reads, I have come as my father's representative, and you do not receive me. If someone else comes representing only himself, him you will receive. 
Both the contemporary English version and the Good News translation almost always use the word authority instead of name whenever Yeshua uses the phrase, in my father's name. This is one instance where I absolutely agree with the scholars that help translate these particular versions. Not only are they consistent in translating like this in the New Testament, but also implement this concept in the Old Testament as was discussed in part 1. John chapter 7 verses 14 to 18 fleshes out these ideas in a way where we see the Messiah claiming that the authority he had to teach and speak was not his own. He didn't come out of nowhere with his own agenda and message. It was the creator of the heavens and the earth that sent Yeshua to speak on his behalf as his most important and perfect representative. Let's take a look at that. About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man is learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and in him there is no falsehood. God's will is for his people to repent from their lawlessness and to go back to practicing the terms of the covenant that he made with mankind from the very beginning of creation. The terms are his instructions as found in his liberating law. Father's will is for men to search for his kingdom above, to understand how it has always and will always operate. We know that Yeshua spoke in the authority given to him by the Father, and not in his own as he claimed several times. His message was consistent with all the other agents that the Father sent in times past. Without a solid understanding of what the prophets of old spoke about, people will confuse the words of the Son of God and twist what he said to fit their own preconceived notions doctrinal leanings, and denominational biases. The authority that's encapsulated in the Father's name is given to those who love the ways of the kingdom of God and loathe the ways of the God of this current age. Don't allow the pride of life and the lust of the flesh to blind you from seeing beyond your immediate circumstances, whether good or bad. Don't follow suit to the religious elite of Yeshua's day who could not accept the prophet of Deuteronomy 18 and refused to believe what Yahweh's representative had to say to them. John 10, 24-26 says, So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. If you believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, and prophet that the Father sent into the world, then you are among his sheep. Meditate on the words that the Son spoke in his Father's name. Meditate on the words that all the prophets of old spoke in the Father's name. Your faith and trust in what the Father has spoken throughout this age will foster your own ability to carry the authority that Yeshua says we can have in his name, which is what the last part of this three-part series will explore. Thank you for watching part two. Please like, share, and subscribe if the content on this channel has provided understanding in your faith journey. Also, I want to say a special thanks to all of my supporters. Support comes in a plethora of ways, and all of it is very much appreciated. Yahweh bless you.